If we have a neurology postings, one word that we hear repeatedly is something known as the hemiplegia. Right? So hemiplegia means weakness of one side of the body that you can see over here in this image. Right? Now hemiplegia is a neurological manifestation. Now hemiplegia is something known as weakness as we just discussed. Now weakness simply means motor deficit. That means there's something a motor attribute is present. If motor attribute is present, that means there will be involvement of motor neurons or motor nerves. Right? And if there are motor nerves, there can be upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons. Right? And the upper motor neurons are known as spino, I mean corticospinal pathways or corticospinal tracts. Right? So today's discussion will revolve all around the corticospinal tracts. Right? So, to understand hemiplegia, we have to understand about corticospinal tracts, right? But today's discussion is not about hemiplegia, it's about crossed and uncrossed hemiplegia that we get to hear repeatedly from our neurology teachers. But for that, let us understand hemiplegia first. Now, corticospinal tracts, if we see, they start from the cortex over here, or the motor cortex, right, in the brain. Now, from in over here, somewhere in the motor cortex, they start, they go down through the brain, they cross up area known as internal capsule, then through the brain stem, they go into the lower part of the brainstem and in the lower part of the medulla they cross the midline see this is the midline over here they're crossing and this region where they cross this level is known as lower medulla right remember this we will require this right after crossing and this crossing is known as the pyramidal decussation right pyramidal decussation now after crossing they go down through the lateral corticospinal tract up to a certain level and this all this is the upper motor neuron and after that they get converted into a lower motor neuron and that lower motor neuron goes to the muscle and supplies the muscle right okay now over here we want to know hemiplegia that means there will be a lesion in the motor nerve now the lesion can be in the lmn or it can be in the umn now let's focus on the umn umn now the lesion can be above the level of decussation at the level of decussation or below the level of decussation Right. Now, what determines crossed or uncrossed hemiplegia? Now, this crossed and uncrossed is dependent on the cranial nerve involvement associated with the hemiplegia. Now, let us, for example, take two cranial nerves. For example, we take the cranial nerve 3 over here, cranial nerve 3 nuclei over here, that is CN3, which is at the level of midbrain. Right. And we take the cranial nerve 12. Right cranial nerve 12 which is present at the level of lower medulla just below the pyramidal decussation okay right now let us talk about two nerve lesions okay now one lesion is at the level of midbrain right so this is our lesion one now what happens over here now over here what gets damaged let's see so the corticospinal tract of okay let's name these things Suppose this is the right hand side and this is the left hand side, okay? So, the damage is our left sided corticospinal tract and our cranial nerve 3 nucleus of left side. That means they will lead to what? They will lead to right sided weakness. Because see, the corticospinal tract of left side is ultimately crossing the midline and pyramidal decussation and supplying muscles of the right side. That's why there will be a right sided weakness. And cranial nerve 3 of left side damaged means it will cause a left sided CN3 palsy because they are not crossing anywhere. Right. Now, based on the level of lesion, you can understand that over here, okay, the lesion is on the left. So, based on the lesion, the right sided weakness is contralateral and the CN pulse, CN3 palsy is ipsilateral. So over here, based on the lesion, the cranial nerve involvement and the hemiplegia are on the two opposite sides of the body. And this is known as crossing of the pattern of involvement and crossed hemiplegia. That means over here, you can get to see that the cranial nerve involvement is on the left side. CN involvement. And the corticospinal tracts. Corticospinal tract involvement is on the right or weakness on the right we can frame it as weakness and this arrangement is known as a crossed 
hemiplegia. Right? Now let us come to a lesion below the pyramidal decussation. Suppose we get a lesion over here. That is our lesion number 2. So what happens in lesion 2? In lesion 2, we get corticospinal right so what happens in lesion 2 in lesion 2 we get one that is corticospinal tract involvement of right side and cranial nerve 12 involvement of right side now corticospinal tract involvement on the right side in this case leads to right sided weakness because this is below the level of decussation and the cranial nerve palsy of right side leads to cranial nerve involvement of right side in the cranial nerve 12 leads to CN12 palsy of right side. Okay, now based on the location of the lesion, that is our lesion over here is on the right, the weakness is ipsilateral and the cranial nerve involvement is also ipsilateral. That means between the weakness and cranial nerve involvement, there is no crossing, and hence this sort of arrangement is presence in a way that is right sided involvement of the cranial nerve as well as there is right sided involvement right sided hemiplegia that is over here right sided cranial nerve involvement and we have right sided weakness and this is known as a uncrossed hemiplegia. So by now, I believe you have understand the difference between a crossed hemiplegia and uncrossed hemiplegia.